Welcome everyone. Well, welcome everyone uh, to Housing Oregon's annual Leadership Awards and Industry Support Conference. I'm Brian Hoop, Executive Director for Housing Oregon. And like last year, uh, we are again collaborating with seven other peer state community development associations like Housing Oregon to bring you a multi-state nationwide week-long conference. I'm honored by our many sponsors, 47 sponsors this year, member organizations and presenters who've made this event possible. I especially wanna thank our presenting sponsors, Wells Fargo and Walsh Construction Company. Also other lead sponsors have included uh, Oregon Housing and Community Services, JP Morgan Chase Bank and Meyer Memorial Trust. And for those who don't know, I want to remind you Housing Oregon is a statewide member organization association of nonprofit and for profit multifamily rental affordable housing developers and home ownership developers and homeless service providers across the state of Oregon. Um, housing Oregon board chair Sheila Stiley, executive director of Northwest Coastal Housing, uh, was hoping to be with us to make these opening remarks. She wishes she could be here, but she had a family um, medical emergency that she needed to attend to. And the Housing Oregon uh, Annual Leadership Awards are first and foremost, an opportunity to recognize and celebrate the amazing efforts of the many staff, leaders, and volunteers championing affordable multifamily rental housing and homeless services and home ownership opportunities for low-income households across Oregon who are ad advancing innovative innovation, equity, and impact within the affordable housing industry in Oregon. I'm joined today by representatives from our presenting sponsors with Wells Fargo is Shabri Vickers, Vice President and Community Development Officer for Oregon, and with Walsh Construction, Afton Walsh, Community Outreach Director and Project Manager. Each will have the honor to uh, split up presenting the awards to each of the individuals and representatives of organizations who are receiving the recognition today. So without further delay, I introduce Shabri Vickers from Wells Fargo. Thank you so much, Brian. And thank you for the dedicated work that you and your team have put in to make this virtual conference so informative for Oregonians engaged in housing efforts. Again, I'm Shabri Vickers and my pronouns are she and her. And as Brian mentioned, I serve as the Community Development Officer for Wells Fargo here in Oregon. Uh, Wells Fargo is truly honored to once again serve as a presenting sponsor for the Housing Oregon Resilient Communities Industry Support Conference. This year, uh, although virtual, we're still uh, so excited to, to gather with all of you who joined for today's event. Um, Wells Fargo believes safe and affordable housing should be accessible to all. And that's why the Wells Fargo Foundation has donated more than $80 million in 2020 to support housing efforts, including rental assistance relief, financial coaching, and free or low cost legal assistance to help people avoid eviction. By investing strategically and supporting diverse developers, we also believe we can help address the current housing supply challenges. And we continue to be proud of the recent $7.1 million neighborhood lift program we delivered in Multnomah County resulting in over 280 new homeowners finding the added stability, which is so important, especially now. You know, these past few years amidst COVID have exacerbated inequities among communities who had already been in need of robust support across our country. And with the multiple crises here in Oregon, from the pandemic, and wildfires of 2020, along with the ongoing crises of houselessness in communities across Oregon, what we know for sure is that the work all of your organizations do every day is invaluable to the health of our communities and the viability of our state. For that reason, I am truly excited to join you as we highlight just a small handful of the people who helped ensure Oregonians could more easily find and afford home. Now, there have been far more shiny examples of affordable housing staff and advocates persisting through an unparalleled year than we can recognize in one hour. However, I wanna make sure you know how this session will be organized. So I will call upon some individual awardees one by one to be spotlighted 
by our amazing Zoom tech support. And uh, those awardees will be invited to unmute themselves, show off your award to the audience. Uh, if your plaques have arrived in the mail already, they should have, we believe. Um, and then we invite you to make some brief comments in accepting the award. And so without further ado, you all are here uh, for the awards. And I look forward um, to introducing our first award to receive the Legislative Champion Award. Now the Legislative Champion Award is given to recognize courageous leadership by an elected official making a significant impact on the development of affordable housing during this previous year. And Representative Julie Fahey, representing District 14 and chair of the House Committee on Housing, had a key role during the 2021 legislative session, helping secure a historic investment of over $765 million in resources for multifamily, rental housing, homeless services, and home ownership opportunities for low-income Oregonians. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, she advocated for passage of an eviction moratorium for tenants, foreclosure moratorium for homeowners, and hundreds of millions in federal and state resources for emergency rental assistance. She also sponsored multiple policy bills, including SB8 and House Bill 2008 making it easier to site and build affordable housing on a wider range of land use zones. Please help me welcome Representative Julie Fahey. All right, thank you. Got through, got, was able to unmute. Um, I thank you so much. I am so honored to receive this award today. Um, you know, I, I received the actual physical award um, in the mail on Monday, and the thing that I immediately noticed about it was the weight of it. It's actually pretty heavy for its size. Um, and I, you know, when I became a legislator, I entered the housing policy space wanting to address the issue of how can we build enough housing to meet the need in Oregon? And then, like so many other things, the pandemic kind of upended that plan. Um, I've spent much of the last 18 months as part of a team of dedicated housing advocates that are that scrambled to put in place policies like the eviction moratorium and the foreclosure moratorium um, and investments to just try and keep people housed during the pandemic. Um, and, and personally, I have never felt the weight and the urgency of the work that we do so intensely the weight of so many Oregonians who face housing insecurity and of our responsibility to take action to prevent them from losing their homes. So it really, it seems fitting to me to have this physical representation of the weight of all of that work that um, I and so many others have done over the last 18 months. I do wanna say, I really appreciate the comments about, you know, SB8 and some of the other policy bills that we passed. We, we um, in addition to that urgent work, keeping people housed during the pandemic, we also had many wins related to sort of the ongoing housing crisis in Oregon. Um, this legislative, this past legislative session uh, earlier in the year, we, we passed the bills to ex expedite siting of affordable housing projects um, and breaking down barriers for religious organizations to build affordable housing. The pandemic and the wildfires um, pushed us to set up Project Turnkey, which is an innovative uh, program that help, helped us buy up hotels and motels to provide um, uses shelters for wildfire victors and victims and people experiencing homelessness. Um, and during the legislative session, we also passed um, policies to make it easier to cite those projects. We were, as was mentioned, we were able to make big investments in affordable housing in 2021. Over uh, 765 million statewide in housing related investments from a combination of state and federal funding. And that included 550 million for affordable housing construction, preservation and land acquisition. And also funding for several innovative projects that I'm really excited about around shared equity home ownership uh, and an ADU construction pilot project. So those investments are huge. And they indicate that there is a strong recognition in the legislature and at the state level that affordable housing must be a top priority if our state is going to thrive. Um, we worked very well together across 
the aisle, there is clearly strong agreement um, in both parties and across the state that Oregon must take action on this front. So I really look forward to continuing the work that was done um, with partners like Housing Oregon. And I'm just so grateful for our, all of the work that all of you do to make Oregon an affordable place to live for everyone. So thank you so much again for this award. Thank you so much, Representative Fahey. Um, you know, the weight of the work and the importance of this work is absolutely without a doubt something to be noted. Thank you for your dedication. And I agree, affordable housing is absolutely a top priority. And I'm so glad to be here with you and uh, with you all as we continue the awards. Thank you so much. Next, we are going to announce our Star Player Award. The Star Player Award recognizes the outstanding contribution, contribution, excuse me, of individuals who have made, of contributions of individuals that they've made over the course of pr the previous year with special attention this year to their resilience and perseverance through the challenges of the COVID pandemic. And so our Star Player Award goes to Oscar Arana, who is the Director of Community Development with NEA, the Native American Youth and Family Center, and he is absolutely the driving force behind many innovative affordable housing developments that serve Indigenous and tribal people in the Coley neighborhood in Northeast Portland. Nasika Elahi opened its doors to 59 households in early 2020. Mamuk Tokati and Hayuk Tillicum are currently under construction and will be home to a combined 105 households. Oscar has led his team building upon existing relationships and forged partnerships with NARA, the Celeste Tribe, Community Development Partners, HUD, and a variety of funders. And as a board member of NEA, I am truly proud to welcome Oscar Arana. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much, Sherbri, for that kind introduction. And thank you for your service in the Portland Metro community, as well as a NEA board member. Um, I want to start just by thanking Cameron Harrington uh, for nominating me for this award. Uh, Cameron is doing some really excellent housing and housing advocacy work uh, in the Cully neighborhood as a Living Cully program manager. Um, so this, the housing work we're doing uh, for the Native community uh, requires a lot of incredibly smart and dedicated people, uh, definitely a lot smarter than me, so I want to make sure they're acknowledged today. Um, from NEA, I want to thank our Executive Director, Paul Lumley, and our NEA Board of Directors, and our Housing Committee Board members, especially Molly Washington, our Board Chair. Uh, the dedicated NEA staff, especially the housing and community development team, uh, including Jenny Serencioni, Keith Ferrante, Emily Schelling, and Dolores Burgos, who even though she's no longer a NEA employee, she spent 12 years uh, dedicated to housing services. Um, our NARA partners um, who are leading our resident services work, um, Amy Thompson, Angelique Saxton and Natalie Martin. Uh, from the Celeste Tribe Housing Department, uh, Sammy Joe Defentorum, Isaac DeAnda, and Celeste Tribal Council, and all of the Celeste's uh, housing staff uh, that are doing this work and helping us reach tribal members. Uh, and of course, community development partners, uh, Eric Payne, uh, Jessica Woodruff, Lucy Corbett, uh, Maya Wynn Carnes, Mary Langsford, Hannah Atherton, and Brad Long. So I also want to acknowledge our construction team, LMC, and our architects, Carlton Hart, as well as our uh, property management company, Viridian. Uh, thank you for putting up with all of my emails and all of my questions and all of my requests. So really appreciate your patience with all of this work. And of course, um, our private and public and philanthropic funders who make this work possible, uh, including OHCS, PHB, uh, Home Forward, Meyer Memorial Trust, the Joint Office of Homelessness Services, to name only a few. So um, everyone I just mentioned deserves this award. Uh, so I'm sharing this award with them. Uh, you know, awards tend to recognize success and, and excellence, but 
this housing work really always feels challenging and stressful and risky. So, you know, mistakes are uh, definitely made. Um, and I want us to, to encourage us to keep celebrating mistakes and taking risks uh, because without them, we wouldn't uh, be innovative and bold in creating uh, the necessary housing solutions for tribal members and the native community. So please keep challenging the, and questioning the status quo uh, because the status quo has never created the results we need when it comes to tribal and BIPOC community members. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do in Kali. Uh, as Shabri said, we have 105 more units coming soon. And I'm looking forward to continue working with such an incredibly talented team. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Oscar. First of all, that smart and dedicated list of people that you just acknowledged are absolutely a part of the success and relief that you are able to bring to our communities. You know, the innovative funding and intentional work you are doing is certainly worthy of so much celebration right now. And that list of folks is indicative of the collaboration needed to take the smart risks, like you mentioned, and bring the realization of home to our communities. Thank you for your work and thank you for your dedication. Next, I will be announcing the Golden Key Award. The Golden Key Award honors a home ownership project recently completed that best demonstrates the ideals of affordability, quality of design, livability, community revitalization, or service integration. And the awardee is the North Blandina Townhomes, uh, and they're recognized and they're going to be accepted by Kimberly Horner, Executive Director of Portland Community Reinvestment Initiatives. The North Blandina Townhomes are a six unit home ownership project completed in 2020 by PCRI, located in North and Northeast Portland. The townhomes were designed with families in mind, offering two and three bedroom units, and the project is exemplary of PCRI's ambitious Pathway 1000 initiative, a 10-year effort to help prevent and mitigate displacement in the Albina community. The homes were sold to pre-qualified clients in PCRI's home ownership program, and the project also exemplified integration of workforce development opportunities with small minority and women-owned businesses, as well as supporting mentorship and training opportunities. And I am truly excited and honored to welcome Kimberly Horner, Executive Director of PCRI. Thank you, Shabri. That was a very lovely and warming welcome. Um, we really appreciate the time and energy that um, Housing Oregon has put together to um, provide everybody an opportunity to be recognized for the work they do in this field. Um, so I do want to say thank you to Brian Hoop and Housing Oregon for this very thoughtful award to the Portland Community Reinvestment Initiatives uh, for the work that we do with our Pathways 1000 program. In a minute, you'll hear from Andrea Detman, who manages our homeownership program, However, I'd like to take this time to thank our partners that made this work possible. In the room with me, some of the faces you can see, um, to my left is Andrea Debman, to my right is Kimberly Jackson, and we also have our finance director here, as well as our deputy director. Um, unfortunately, when we have these Zoom type programs, it's very difficult to pan in for everybody to be seen but from my perspective, when we do this work, it's not just about um, the executive director, it's about the talented people that I'm surrounded with that help us um, get this work done. As you know, providing homeownership opportunities to our residents is a big challenge. It's expensive to construct, construct housing while keeping the units affordable to our clients who desperately want a place of their own that they can call home. And we couldn't do this work without the support of our partners. First of all, I want to uh, thank Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo has always been a supporter of our homeownership program. And I would like to personally thank Shabi Vickers for always keeping PCRI in mind when it comes time to funding our homeownership programs. 
not only does Shabri reach out to our organization to make sure that we're doing okay as a minority-led affordable housing provider, but she also keeps uh, that relationship building going with many of us affordable housing nonprofits in this space. So we appreciate that work that you do. Um, second, I would also like to thank my Memorial Trust who allow us an opportunity to work freely in this space. Without their support, it would be very difficult for us to continue to construct units, um, both in the affordable uh, housing for sale space, as well as in our rental space. Our business, our business partners, such as the Portland Housing Bureau, the Bureau of Development Services, um, Nate McCoy with NAMAC and NAMAC in general and Albina Construction have really stepped up to the plate to make sure that we're able to de deliver affordable housing units. So thank you to them. And a big thank you to um, our board of directors. Without their support, this organization would not be able to move forward with our Pathway 1000 initiatives, which is to build over 8,000 units in the next 10 years. Um, Big hug and a big thank you to the staff that makes this happen. Andrea Debman um, has led courageously the organization through these homeownership opportunities. Um, she has Yvette, Linda, and Suzanne from her team that get people ready for um, homeownership opportunities, as well as another long-term um, employee, Kimberly Jackson. So thank you. Also, we couldn't do this work without the support from our finance team, David Wilcox and uh, Tamara Trofamico, and our housing development team, Charles Funches, and our newest addition, uh, uh, Jeremy um, Justin. Most of all, I want to thank the buyers, the home buyers. They are the folks that did the hard, hard work of becoming um, home um, ownership ready. And they were able to hang in there through a pandemic and do all the due diligence that was required to make them ready to purchase these units. Please continue to follow PCRI. Um, we have new faces that have joined the team and we appreciate your help in helping us uh, deliver Pathway 1000. I'll now turn the comments over to Andrea Dubman for some warm words from Andrea and her team. Well, geez, I don't know how you follow that, but um, I will do my best. I really echo everything that Kimberly has said. Shabri, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being such a friend to this organization. Um, and here it is, isn't it beautiful? Um, but thank you to everybody. Again, this work um, is a labor of love, um, but it certainly takes a village to make it happen. So I definitely want to just um, call out again the home ownership team, uh, Suzanne, Yvette, and Linda, who work tirelessly with all of our participants and helping them get over it, the finish line. Um, really, a lot of this belongs to them and all the folks in the background um, making it happen. So thank you again for the acknowledgement. Um, we're excited about continuing our Path of 1000 initiative. We have, what, 10 homes in the ground. We've got 790 to go. <laughs> so we hope you all will be with us for the long haul. Um, but thank you so much for this honor. It is, it is, it is really, it feels awesome. So thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Kimberly and Andrea. We, I mean, we love you all and thank you for the work that you do every day that folks don't always get to see. You know, Pathways 1000 is truly an ambitious program and one that Wells Fargo continues to be honored to support. And you listed so many amazing supporters and sponsors of that work. And I'm so glad to stand next to them as you all do some fabulous work. The talented team at PCRI continue to be the key to success for restoration of the dream of home ownership in North and Northeast Portland. And Andrea Debnam is always ready to ensure our community members are ready to take on the opportunities available by supporters across our region. Susan and Linda, we thank you and celebrate you as well today. Thank you, PCRI. Next, I will announce um, to receive the second of three Star Player Awards. Um, and again, the Star Player Award recognizes the outstanding contributions of individuals who have made uh, the, 
of contributions, I cannot get this right anytime, contributions of individuals that they've made over the course of the previous year with special attention this year to their resilience and perseverance through the challenges of the COVID pandemic. And so our next star player awardee is Sarah Mole. Sarah is the fiscal and fund development manager at BNSTAR. Sarah was critical to BNSTAR's response to COVID-19. She helped BNSTAR fundraise nearly $250,000 in private funding to provide direct economic assistance to BNSTAR's residents during the pandemic via the Esperanza Fund and helped maintain the organization's office and staff morale throughout their COVID response. She also helped deliver the funds to BNSTAR residents via rent checks, utility payments, and other forms of direct assistance. Sarah, we celebrate you. Please help me welcome Sarah Mole. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Uh, I feel so, I feel very appreciated. I did get my award in the mail and I just love it. It's beautiful. Um, I wanna start out by thanking all of our donors, our sponsors, our funders, everyone who contributed to the Esperanza Fund, our board of directors, and most of all, the wonderful team at the Anastar that I am lucky enough to get to work with every day. You know, at the start of the COVID pandemic, we thought, let's, let's raise some money. So we set a goal of $30,000. As you can see, we, we went well past that. We raised over 250,000. And I say we, because there's no one on the Vienna Star team who did not help out with this effort. It really was the entire team lifting this cause. Um, and we had kind of hoped that the Esperanza Fund would be a one and done, but as you can see, there's still a pandemic on, we're still on Zoom. There's still this community need that we see for families who live in affordable housing to get direct assistance. So we are working hard to replenish the fund, even as we're still rolling out direct assistance to the community every single week. Um, so I just am overwhelmed with how grateful I am to Bienestar and to the community at large for this opportunity I have to be a part of a hardworking, dedicated team of wonderful human beings, to belong to an organization that shares my values and does good in the world, and to do meaningful work that helps people in my community stay stably housed. So thank you so much for all of this. Wow, Sarah, thank you so much. You are absolutely correct. The Esperanza Fund is certainly and has been a team effort worth celebrating because, I mean, you took that $30,000 goal and just blew it out of the water. So kudos to you and the team. We are absolutely proud to have been a part of celebrating uh, you all today. And you are correct. The need is still here. And so we encourage folks who are listening and others across Oregon to continue to support the important work of the Esperanza Fund and what BNSR does in our communities. Thank you, Sarah. And next, we are going to um, do the, the Steps to Success Award. And the Steps to Success Award honors an outstanding resident service and or asset building program that effectively improves the lives of low-income families or individuals. And this year, uh, that award goes to Bradford Long for the Asset Management Team at Community Development Partners. Community Development Partners Asset Management Team is recognized this year for the Steps to Success, excuse me, Steps to Success Award, uh, which is being accepted by Bradford Long, Director of Asset Management at CDP. The program supports a robust resident services programming offered across the portfolio of CDP's responsive approach to service contracts. CDP is recognized for both their exemplary efforts assisting residents through the COVID-19 pandemic with emergency rental assistance applications and their work with community stakeholders at the inception of a pro project to evaluate the needs of existing or prospective residents in order to se select the resident-driven services partners for each property. CDP works with a variety of resident services, excuse me, resident service organizations who provide services such as case management, referrals for rental assistance, financial literacy assistance, employment and education counseling, community building events, art activities, after school programming, and food pantries. And so I am so uh, glad today to welcome Bradford Long 
to accept the Steps to Success Award. Bradford? Hey everyone, thanks so much, Shabri. Thanks, Brian. Um, as Shabri mentioned, uh, CDP is accepting this award for its creative efforts and hard work from our resident service and asset management teams. Uh, as everybody knows, these past couple of years have been especially challenging for our residents, uh, both economically as well as mentally. And thanks to CDP's efforts, as well as those of our service partners, we were, we were able to assist our residents on both fronts. On the resident services side, um, CDP measures our success by the impact that we have on our community, uh, both our apartments, uh, our residents, as well as the surrounding neighborhood. And this in itself is a very challenging task in that each apartment community that we serve uh, can have a very different population. Um, therefore, CDP typically engages the Center for Public Interest Design, which is a research center based in Portland State University, which in turn leads the community engagement process to best identify uh, our needs and match those of our communities with the, uh, the best fit service partners. Uh, as a result of our engagement efforts, CDP has uh, partnered with 16 different organizations, um, and that includes 12 of our projects, which are seven stabilized deals uh, and five projects in development. And despite the challenges that we've uh, faced over the past couple of years, uh, our service uh, partners, just for these seven stabilized deals, have been able to organize nearly 700 resident events. Uh, and on top of that, they produced over 500 meals that we were able to distribute to our residents at little or no cost. With respect to the economic support, CDP's asset management team was at the forefront of connecting residents with the various rental assistances offer, offered by our local agencies. Between last year and this year, uh, and this is just, just for Oregon, the CDP was able to connect over 250 households with over $200,000 of much needed rental support. Uh, on a personal note, I would like to commend uh, OHCS and PHB uh, who led a, a, a very clean process um, and were able to get the funds into the hands that needed most uh, very expeditiously. Uh, so in conclusion, I'm very proud of our asset management team and our resident services team. Uh, we also rely extensively on our, our property management companies, our service providers, uh, and as noted, our local agencies. And without the extensive network of support, none of this could have been possible. So thanks again to uh, Housing Oregon for this generous award. Fantastic, thank you so much, Bradford. Your asset management team does challenging work, but absolutely imperative work during such an important time in our communities. And I mean, 700 resident events, that's no small feat. Anyone who's ever organized an event knows that it's certainly work of the heart. So kudos to you and your team. Please share with them our appreciation for the work that you all continue to do. Thank you. And this is the point of our um, event where I get to pass it off to Afton Walsh, Community Outreach Director and Project Manager at Walsh Construction. Afton? Thanks, Shabri. Uh, good afternoon, Housing Oregon Conference. It's a pleasure to be spending the lunch hour with you all. Walsh Construction is a Northwest general contractor celebrating our 60th anniversary with over 50,000 affordable housing units built throughout the Northwest. And it is an honor to represent Walsh and to celebrate with many friends and colleagues who are true champions of affordable housing and fight every day to make Oregon a place where all can thrive. Giving these awards helps us all to better understand the breadth of skill sets and talents to continually innovate, or I think as Oscar brilliantly put it, to challenge and to work towards better. Delivering high quality and accessible housing is a team sport. And today we are recognizing housing developers, asset management teams, fiscal managers, resident service managers, home ownership education and counseling programs, allies in the legislature, community organizations, and workforce development efforts who each play a critical role to pave the way for a resilient and diverse future for the affordable housing industry in Oregon. So without further ado, uh, let's move on to our sixth leadership award. So uh, this is the Gretchen Kafori Award. And as a fearless activist, as well as an elected official who always stood up for what is right, Gretchen Kafori had a profound and lasting impact, impact on our state and its people. The Gretchen Kafori Award honors an individual, organization, or endeavor that had a significant impact in the past year on affordable housing community development 
and or social justice in Oregon. And this year's award goes to Reina Lopez for the Oregon Worker Relief Fund. Leading the way on the Oregon Worker Relief Fund, this, oh, um, sorry, it is none other than Farm Worker Housing Development Corporation Board Secretary and PCUN's Executive Director, Reina Lopez. The Oregon Worker Relief Fund is a historic innovative uh, supported by stakeholders at all levels to invest in immigrant Oregonians who are excluded from federal relief funds during the COVID-19 pandemic. FHDC served as a fiscal administrator for the fund, distributing tens of millions of dollars in resources to more than 37,000 individuals who did not qualify for state or federal relief funds and social services. With a fierce vision for the redistribution of wealth, wealth protection for all workers, the fund created a safety net for immigrant essential workers who experienced exacerbated inequalities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, please welcome Reina Lopez. Hi everybody, and thank you so much for this award. Here it is, it's beautiful. <laughs> On behalf of Farm Worker Housing Development Corporation, PECUN, and also the Oregon Worker Relief Fund, I just want to say thank you all um, from the bottom of my heart for this recognition. Many immigrants and refugees work in jobs that are key to the state's prosperity, including farm workers, food processing workers, housekeepers, construction workers, landscapers, I can go on and on, uh, workers that right now do not have legal status, but are essential to uh, the continuation of the day to day in our communities and our lives, and yet are not treated as essential. And this is why it's been uh, my life's work and the life's work of the people that I want to thank today to continue to invest resources in the Oregon Worker Relief Fund in immigrant communities, refugee communities across the country, and of course, the fight of our lives, um, which has been uh, getting a pathway to legalization for 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States today. And I want to just first start by thanking the executive committee. There were sleepless nights, a few years lost, um, and, uh, and many, many, many tears. <laughs> at some points uh, to be able to get make this uh, program happen, especially after hearing the cries of our communities at the beginning of the pandemic who were excluded from unemployment insurance and the stimulus supports that were provided by the federal government, um, even though they were working here and making sure that our communities kept running. So I just want to thank um, Jessica Maravilla. I want to thank Marta Sonato, Pecun's political director, and also the chair of the, of the executive committee of the Oregon Worker Relief Fund, Larry Kleinman, um, Stephen Manning uh, the, from Innovation Law Lab, Jenny Poole Radway from Consejo Hispano, Kua uh, from Apano, Estela Munoz Villarreal from CAUSA, and also the, the uh, manager of the coalition, making sure that we were on point every single meeting, Isa Peña from CAUSA, Oregon, uh, C. Adam Edmo from Seeding Justice. Um, Sam from Consejo Hispano, Leland Baxter, uh, Ma uh, Maria Elena Guerra, Meg from FHTC, who I know she uh, is on the call today, Adriana Miranda and Ricardo Luján, but also the participating organizations. We had over 20 organizations that were supporting in the delivery of service and everybody put in their, their little part to make sure that this thing worked and it could reach statewide, could reach every corner of Oregon, um, including my organization, but Latino Network, Apano, Consejo Hispano, who you heard already, inter Interfaith Movement for Immigrant Justice, Road Climate, Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization, ERCO, Beyond Toxics, Oregon Food Bank, Latino Community or Organization, VOS, uh, Centro de Servicios para Campesinos based out of Pecun, um, Oregon Human Development Corporation, Oregon Latino Health Coalition, Northwest Worker Justice Project, Adelante Mujeres, Casa Latinos Unidos, Centro Latinoamericano Uvalcri Rural Organizing Project, Momentum Alliance, Virginia Garcia, Bienestar, Familias en Acción, Capaces, Oregon Center for Public Policy, uh, Unidos Bridging Communities, La Clinica, Portland Community College, Somali American Council Organization of Oregon, ACLU, Huerto de la Familia, and Rose Community Bridge Holistic Wellness Center, Unite Oregon and NAYA PDX. So big love to y'all uh, for helping us make this happen. Over a hundred coalition members were part of making this, this uh, work. And with the 26 navigating organizations, we have reached um, many counties throughout the, the state and it really was a historical effort 
So far, like today, we have been able to distribute 105 million with an M, $231,929.68 to date. And we've been able to serve 31,808 applicants that received support uh, that wouldn't have gotten it from the the traditional systems that usually help workers that are are needing a safety net and also huge effort to ensure that this was a multilingual effort that there was language access in um, the way that people needed it we had um, information in not just in spanish and english but in indigenous languages like acoteco chuk um, kishke mam mayan uh, Yucat mayan yucateco mixteco um, purepecha conjugal zapoteco and and many more um, and this is what it takes to get to the most uh, ex excluded workers in our communities. It takes a uh, big effort. It takes um, everyone chipping in. And just to close out, um, I just want to uh, just say again that we need immigration reform. We need it now. We needed it years ago. And the, one of the biggest reasons why people aren't getting the support they need is because of this uh, exclusion that we still have today. And of course, um, we're, we're still looking towards fairness and justice when it comes to wages and building that wealth for essential workers. Um, so for those of you who do advocate, please support the Fair Shot agenda and the farm worker overtime issue. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you again for this, this um, beautiful award. Thank you, Raina. Uh, wow, that is an amazing group of advocates. Um, and I think thank you for the really important reminder of what can be accomplished when we all band together. So next uh, is the Golden Hammer Award, which honors a multifamily rental project that best shows the ideals of affordability, quality of design, livability, community uh, revitalization, or service integration. The Cedar Grove Apartments is recognized this year for, the gold, for this award and is being accepted by Rachel Duke, Executive Director, and Jillian Siraj Felton, Housing Director with Community Partners for Affordable Housing. The Cedar Grove Apartments responded to the urgent need of affordable housing with 44 units of low-income housing, including eight for at-risk families recovering from houselessness. Mindful of this, the development team and design team prioritized trauma-informed design elements, such as low contrast color palette, round and co rounded corners throughout the building, clear wayfinding, and access to natural elements provided by Reflections Plaza. The plaza is the result of a partnership between SEPA and Tualatin Hills Park, Parks and Recreation District, and is the first mini park in THPRD's park system. It is also the very first development to pay no system development charges within THPRD. Cedar Grove exceeded initial Earth Advantage goals to achieve platinum certification. So please welcome Jillian Siraj Felton and Rachel Duke. I, I am so pleased to be here today uh, with you all and so honored to accept this uh, award on behalf of Community Partners for Affordable Housing. Um, I'm also really uh, pleased to say uh, Jillian has prepared an, uh, some words for us today, and I'm going to turn it over to her because she was really the lead person on this project once we got started, and she, uh, she really, uh, for the work that she led, deserves to um, be uh, honored um, at this moment. So thank you, Jillian. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Rachel, and, and just on behalf of SEPA, we're so honored by this recognition uh, for our Cedar Grove Apartments. One of the things that we like to say at SEPA is that we build housing for people, which sounds really silly because of course, housing is always for people. But what that funny phrase means to us is that we're always building with the resident in mind. How can we decrease the isolation of poverty? How can we bring the neighborhood to this housing and have the housing be part of this neighborhood? What feature do our current residents most enjoy and what do they wish they had available? How do we create interiors which are both trauma informed and durable? How do we make our lease up more equitable? Finding the answers to these questions is what led us to partner with the Parks District to really strive for that Platinum Earth Advantage rating and to include original artwork, a library and community space that is accessible for the residents as well as the neighborhood. And this created a really great project. We would not have been able to achieve this without our team, including Chris Duffin and Aaron McGuire at LMC Construction, Brian Carlton, Melissa Soots and Kayla Zander at Carlton Hart, 
Bob Boschman and Timon Monongi at BC Group, and of course, the SEPA team, including our housing development team, Rachel Lofton and Jeffrey Taylor, our resident services coordinator at Cedar Grove, uh, Rosie Ruiz, who did just went above and beyond in Elisa in the middle of a pandemic, and especially our executive director, Rachel Duke. Rachel's expertise in permanent supportive housing and her unique ability to build community, not only among SEPA's residents, but also um, to integrate service providers, nonprofit partners, agencies, and consultants was vital for Cedar Grove's success. Cedar Grove represents so much of what SEPA values, housing for families, large and small, beautiful design, and partnerships that amplify the vibrancy and the resiliency of our residents. Rachel and SEPA brought together the right partnerships for this project, including community action, a really creative way to fund resident services in partnership with the city of Beaverton, Unite and Unite Oregon. These relationships create opportunities for rental assistance, family services, and housing for houseless families. We could not do what we do without our fabulous partner agencies. And so thank you. Um, as was mentioned, this project also includes the first pocket park which is a small park that's actually owned and operated by the parks district and happens to be the first collaboration between the district and an affordable housing project. So I have to give a big thank you to the district, including specifically Janine Rishtad, uh, Gary Keck and Melanie Moon for always being able to get creative, for wanting to get to yes, for finding solutions um, to do something even if no one had ever done it before. It's, it's, it was a really unique experience and it was, um, it was great to be first. As some of you have probably heard me mention before, Cedar Grove is about half a mile away from my alma mater, Sunset High School. Um, so this award and this project feels really personal and special um, to bring an amenity back to the community that raised me. It's, uh, it's, 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 I'm deeply grateful as is SEPA um, for this recognition and to be awarded the Golden Hammer, um, especially for our project in my, in my neighborhood. So thanks for honoring us today and for seeing the vision that SEPA strives for um, with every project reflected in Cedar Grove Apartments. Thank you, Rachel, Jillian, and SEPA for your great work and uh, being creative to get to yes. I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> um, so to receive the uh, third star player award, this goes to Patricia Lincoln. Pat Patricia is the resident services program manager at REACH CDC. For the past seven years, Patricia has dedicated herself to serving the mission of REACH. She orig originally was an on-site coordinator and led their youth economic empowerment working, uh, work facilitating classes. When COVID hit, Patricia moved to prog programming online to ensure classes continued and pivoted the school supply and holiday gift giveaway to ensure health and safety. She is actively engaged in their diversity, equity, and inclusion work. This past year, she was promoted to resident services program manager. So congratulations. And I'd like to welcome Patricia Lincoln. Thank you so much, Jillian. Um, yeah, so seven years, three roles, five buildings, countless connections and relationships um, that I've formed have given me a lot of insight and I've really valued getting to know so many different people and working with many organizations. Um, the pandemic created its own personal and professional challenges for everyone. Um, and even with all that insight over my years um, in my economic empowerment role, it was most challenging to shift our in-person financial education classes. Um, so we utilize popular education. And some of you may be familiar with that, but popular education doesn't use any technology. <laughs> so to shift that in the middle of a pandemic to be all virtual um, was very challenging. Um, and we, you know, each, you, each week youth were engaged and excited to participate in this extracurricular class, even after attending virtual school. Um, we had no idea what to expect or who would be interested. And with that, we actually had one of our highest attended classes and reached youth across our portfolio, which has historically been a barrier since our company spans across three counties. So Washington, Clark and Multnomah. Um, with our school supply events, I was able to think quickly um, and while our residents were used to coming to events and selecting all of their own school supplies, I shifted to a checklist method where um, they indicated the checklist, or excuse me, they indicated the supplies they were interested in, and then volunteers packed the, the bags on site for them, making sure that our youth still had what they needed to, to be able to go to school. 
Um, thinking of inclusion and accessibility, I did have the checklist translated into six different languages, um, which reached more of our residents. Um, overall, these last few years have really just proven that supportive services can still happen, but they're just gonna look a little bit differently and take some time to sort out. I do wanna con congratulate the other Star Player recipients, Oscar and Sarah. And I also recognize many names and faces, which is really nice to see. So thank, thank you everyone for like all the good work that we are doing within the housing community. Um, I really value being on the REACH Community Development team and I get a lot of support from my coworkers, a few of whom are on the call today, so thank you. Um, I also wanna thank my family members who are also present on the call. And um, overall, just I appreciate the nomination from my supervisor, Elisa Nokian, and I'm honored to receive um, this award by the Housing Oregon. Um, just by believing in me, it validates the drive and that I, um, that I execute each and every day. So thank you so much and here's the award. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, and all the work that you, you've done in such a really unprecedented uh, challenges the last year or two years. Um, so finally, uh, our final award is the Strides for Equity Award, which recognizes the many different ways our members across the state embrace diverse population in their communities and ensure that prosperity is a tide that lifts all boats. And uh, this year, the award goes to Northwest Housing Alternatives. Uh, and here to accept the award is Cameo Tamala, Operations Manager and Cultural Strategist with Northwest, Northwest Housing Alternatives. Northwest Housing Alternatives is recognized for their efforts to advance equity to change organizational culture and achieve better outcomes for residents and clients. Equity work of two staff committees is guided by a strategic plan calling for an understanding of how historical impact does not predict the future and dismantling institutional racism by evaluating and reviewing policy, rules and regulations and industry practice. Specific project examples include the asset management team, which is reviewing barriers to leasing. Management is undertaking a pay equity project to consider employee compensation with an equity lens and a resident advisory council meets directly with the board of directors to give input and hold the organization accountable. So please welcome Cameo Tamala. Uh, thank you to the award committee for selecting Northwest Housing Alternatives for this award. I'm incredibly honored to accept it, but do admit feeling a bit hesitant in receiving an award for doing something so integral that every organization should prioritize in order for every person's humanity to be seen. But that being said, I do have many people to thank who have made it possible for us to receive this. First, I am thankful to have an executive director like Charles Anderson, who has expressed his commitment to diversity and inclusion in affordable housing that is directed towards residents, staff, and volunteers. Together, we are raising the standard and ensuring that the commitments to diversity, equity, and inclusion are just basic expectations at NHA. I'm also incredibly grateful to my colleagues at NHA who have given so much time and emotional and mental capacity in order to make necessary improvements that have directly increased the inclusivity of our culture at NHA. Together, we are empowered to speak with confidence and call out white cishet normative culture. All of this is to say is that we are lucky to have the team in our organization that enables us to do the equity work that is needed in this world. Some examples of our recent strides towards equity is the work that our racial equity, diversity and inclusion committee, as well as our equity policy inquiry committee has done. This includes the creation and use of the equity lens in decision-making, creating and implementing a core curriculum and internal policy review. We also have created three new positions dedicated to equity, including my position as the cultural strategist, as well as our business analysts and the program and data coordinator positions. But there's more work to be done. Simply the work will never be done. This is the foundation that will allow us to keep taking steps for racial equity and equity for all historically marginalized groups. I dedicate this award to all of the staff who have worked tirelessly, our leadership for their willingness to listen, the unending encouragement of our board of directors, and most importantly, to the marginalized people that have been hurt in order for people to learn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I think we are actually gonna finish on time. So Shabri, I think we can uh, 
call this a success. <laughs> uh, congratulations to this year's nine Housing Oregon Leadership Award winners and for all of those who work beside them. We all appreciate your spirit of perseverance in the face of great challenges to continue advancing in innovation, equity, and impact within the affordable housing industry in Oregon. Speaking on behalf of Shabri and myself, it's been an honor for both of us to recognize the amazing work of each of you and everyone you're in, and everything you're engaged in. Remember to check out all the great offerings uh, at the conference throughout the next few days. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Great presentation, everybody. Let's stop the recording.